Hallelujah. Can we stand in the presence of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. If you don't mind, can you raise your hands in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today we declare that your word says, Lord, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth your fruit in his seasons. Your leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever. We doeth, Lord, it shall prosper. And so, Lord, because of the, this morning, we give you praise. Today, we go in the strength of the Lord God. We will make mention of his righteousness and his righteousness only. He shall increase our greatness, and he will comfort us in every sign. Our lips shall greatly rejoice when we sing unto him and our souls which he has redeemed. Our tongue shall talk of his righteousness all the day long. Father, we give you praise today. We give you glory today. We give you honor because you're our king. You're our Lord and you're our savior. We bless you this morning with the fruit of our lips. We call you by your name, hallelujah. Your name is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Makadish, Jehovah El Shaddai. You are our shepherd and our provider. We give you thanks today, Lord. We come to worship you. Hallelujah. We offer praise unto your name. We come today to celebrate, hallelujah, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Sanctify us by your spirit. Sanctify us by your word. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, Lord. We bless you today. From the depths of our heart, we give you thanks. Because great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness unto the children of men. We give you thanks, Lord. We lift up your name and we glorify you. And today we are standing in your presence, knowing that you will not fail because you have never failed. We praise you before because your credit is good with us. We honor you because you will not fail us. So keep us today. Open our hearts to the words that come forth. Let us receive life today and life more abundantly because of your written word. And for that we give you all the praise. For that we give you all the glory. And for that we give you all the honor. And let the church say with me, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. It is written of him. Let the church say amen in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. He cannot and he will not fail. And as we're in that vein, I'd invite you to turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter. As we read our scripture for this morning, we're going to be reading from the 17th through to the 19th verse. If you do not have your Bibles, it will be contained on the screen. So I invite you to read with me as you're standing. Reading from the King James Version in your hearing. And the word of the Lord says, And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. I'll read that last verse one more time. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and he healed them all. Here ends the reading of the Lord's word. Souls 
praise the Lord with all my soul, with all my soul. I praise the Lord, praise with my mouth, praise with my life. And everything I do, I praise you, Lord. I praise you with all my soul, with all my soul. I praise you, Lord, praise with my mouth, praise with my life.
and he is greatly to be praised. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised, Rayma. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised.
making a way for you. If you know that he is making a way for you. Stop working Even when I don't see it
worship you today. of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Father. We honor you today. There is none like you, Daddy. There is none like you, Papa. God, we worship you. We worship you. Our King and our Redeemer. We honor you. We salute you. We salute you. We salute you. Hallelujah. Praise is comely to the righteous. We thank God that we have the ability to stand today. Not all of us could stand. Our brother right there is in a wheelchair. Even when we don't see it, you're moving. Miracles in this place today, God. Confirm your word with signs and with wonders following in this place today. In the name of Jesus, you have hands that you can clap. You have eyes that you can see. You have perfect functioning kidneys. And if it's not functioning properly, we command it to function properly. You have strong hearts this morning. to worship and to praise God this morning so we don't take it for granted and we don't take it lightly that we have an opportunity to come in public there are other parts of the world that they cannot come like this they have to hide and if they're found they're put in prison or killed so we thank God for the opportunity that we have to come collectively to worship him and to honor him and to make his praise known the word of God says that praise tells the enemy and the avenger. When we praise, things happen in the realm of the spirit. There is a shaking right now in Dangzu Park. The highest part of the city. God sits here. He dwells here. He inhabits the praises his people here in Downsview Park, in the highest point of the city. So we worship him today with the understanding in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. If you can, have your seat. If not, remain standing. It's okay. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty in the house because God's Spirit is here. Hallelujah. And this morning, in the absence of our pastors, our senior pastors, Pastor Orim and Pastor Judith Miko, we want to say welcome. Welcome into the rich presence of the Lord. Welcome into this house. This house shall be called a place of praise and worship. Amen. We thank God for them. They're a gift to us. They're God's gift to us. They're his very heart. And so we honor them in their absence this morning. We thank God for them in their absence this morning. In Jesus' name. God, continue to surround them. Continue to strengthen them and empower them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are here for the first time, 
would like to ask you to stand. Please would like to welcome you, embracing you, and loving you. This is your first time here at Rama. Could you please stand? Amen. Those that are around them, go loving them and hugging them, please. Praise God. On behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Orem and Pastor Judith, we say welcome. And someone will connect with you, call you this week. For those who just stood, is anyone visiting from out of town or another country? Yes, where are you visiting from? London? Welcome. God bless London. <laughs> Amen. Good to have you. Good to have all of you. So we thank God for his word this morning. I'm just going to come down to share. Turn to the person next to you and say you look beautiful this morning and I love you in the love of the Lord I thank God you're here today God is going to speak to you tell them God is going to speak to you he's going to give you instructions and he's going to give you the wisdom to apply those instructions amen amen I wouldn't be before you too long this morning. This morning we're going to the Lord's table. But I just want to recap a couple of things that Prophet Charles shared last week with us. There were so many nuggets that came forth last, last week. But there were three things that was really pronounced and it was relevant for me. So it just exploded in my spirit when he shared it. Number one, he said, believing is not enough expectation is what completes the equation and he shared with us the story behind it he was at a Tim Hortons parking lot and this lady pulled up alongside him and um, came out of a car and said to him you know you believe that's not the problem that's not the issue you believe God knows that you believe but you're not expecting expectation and when he said that it was like mm, yes Lord because how many of us believe God? He believe, we believe his promises for our lives. How many of us? Can I see by a show of hands? Yes. We all do. But how many of us expect? The word of the Lord says in, in Proverbs 23, 18, that the expectation of the righteous, it shall not be cut off. So what God spoke or has spoken over your life expect it and I thought of a pregnant woman for those of us who are mothers in the house when you were expecting you know that there was a due date correct there was a due date but before the due date you made preparation because you were expected not that you didn't believe because the believing part took place already you conceived so now you are expecting there is a due date and you're expecting the arrival of this baby so you're doing everything that's needed you, you bought new clothes you bought a crib you bought the baby seat and whatever else is needed to prepare so that when the baby comes everything is already in alignment it's in order and the beauty of this is not just only you who are expecting there are other people that are expecting with you so we believe let's now expect that what we're believing God for he said he watches over his word to perform it so raise your right hand and said God I believe 
now I expect the manifestation of your word in my life amen the next thing he shared that really resonated resonated in my spirit he said I have a responsibility to regulate my thought life because that's where the battle is in our thought life so Romans 12 2 it says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing progressive continuous by the renewing of your mind why so you would prove what is God's good perfect and acceptable will we live in a world that's image based there are always things coming to us coming to our minds voices speaking voices speaking and for the most part most of these things that are coming they are not in accordance or not in alignment with the word of God so there needs to be a constant renewing of our minds with the word of God the third thing that he said we should not be in the same place next year where we are this year so today is the 23rd of February 2020 just look at it and said next year 20 the 23rd of February 2021 I will not be in the same place that I am this year so spiritually we should have moved I should have gotten deeper with the Lord I should have become more intimately acquainted with him and his ways I should have dived deeper into worship the study and the meditation of his word I should have grown spiritually in my relationship with the Lord relationally we shouldn't be in the same place so whether you're married husband and wives your marriage should have gotten stronger it should have grown it should, have, it should be more fortified but your children your relationship with your children should be better those who believe in God if you're single and you believe in God for marriage say I will not be in the same place next year that I am this year I guess there are not many single people in the house you shall have whatsoever you say physiologically you receive a report from the doctor that's what it was a report but whose report will we believe this morning we shall believe the report of the Lord why because his report says that he was wounded for your transgression he was bruised for your iniquities the chastisement of his peace was upon you and by his stripes you are healed not going to be I heard what the doctor said but I choose to believe God's word because it is the highest form of authority that exists so I say amen to that financially you shouldn't be in the same place we shouldn't be in the same place intellectually we shouldn't be in the same place academically we shouldn't be in the same place hallelujah how many of you married women you believe in God for the fruit of the womb you believe in God for the fruit of the womb it is so in the name of Jesus the Word of God said children are his heritage and the fruit of the womb it is his reward father I declare over every married woman in this house today that I believe in you intercessors pray in the spirit that I believe in you for the fruit of the womb your heritage the fruit of the womb God that you will grant it unto them in the name of Jesus we speak to the mountain of barrenness and we command it to be uprooted and cast into the sea in the name of Jesus and we command fruitfulness we command godly seeds to come forth in the name of Jesus even if I don't see it I believe it he never stop wind listen to the sound of power in my lips Jesus has broken the curse and he has never won a battle who are you great mountain that you should not bow low I wish I could sing it who are you great mountain that 
you should not bow low. Mountain of barrenness, bow low. Bow low. Bow low. Bow low. In the name of Jesus and fruitfulness, be so in Jesus' name. So we expect, expect visible, tangible, manifested evidence of that change by February 23rd, 2021. Some of you might be in different stages in your pregnancy. Some might be in your first trimester. Some might be in your second trimester. Some of you might be, you know, crowned already. Your water broke and you're ready to push and deliver. But wherever you are, expect. And we rejoice with you in advance. Look at someone and say, I rejoice with you. I rejoice with you. Look at somebody now and tell them, come on, we're participating this morning. Look at somebody and say, I rejoice with you. <laughs> Their victory is your victory in Jesus' name. So over the years, the enemy has raised up individuals to occupy high places so that those people would be able to set the standards and affect the culture according to Satan's agenda. But I'm here to announce this morning, we are in a time in which the hand of God is upon us to establish us and to lift us up in high places. So what is the message today? What's inside of you? What's inside of you? So I'm going to be asking a series of questions and providing some answers. It will be progressive, some answers. So first, what is God's mandate? Well, what is a mandate? A mandate is an official order or commission to do something. So what is God's official order or commission for us? Genesis 1, 26, verse 28. It's for his children to represent him here on the earth. And it says in the New King James Version, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. God created us in his own image. God created you in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So what are some characteristics of God? Now God said we were created in his image. And an image is a representation of an external form of a person. So if I have a mirror here and I look at the mirror, I am an external form of what I'm seeing in the mirror. So when people see us, they should see an external form of who God is. Our life should speak God. So what are some of his characteristics? He is creator. He is wisdom. And I'll go a little fast. So you can get it um, at Rhema World. He is owner. He is provider. He is holiness. He is goodness. He is mercy. And as I'm declaring, these are his characteristics. I want you to picture yourself because you were created in his image and in his likeness. You reflect his characteristics. He is mercy. He is gracious. So you are gracious. He is faithful. You are faithful. He is love. So you are love. He is loyal. So you are loyal. He's just, so you are just. He's kindness, so you are kindness. He's truth, so you are truth. He's righteousness, 
so your righteousness. He is peace, so you are peace. He is joy, so you are joy. So that's who you are. You have his DNA. So that's who you are. What were God's instruction after creating man? He blessed them. And he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and dominate. And for years, when I read the scripture verse, I always look at these words as verb, the path of speech, verb. But as I was going through and I was meditating, the Lord said, they're not verbs, they're nouns. A verb is an, a regular verb is an action word. You can see it, right? So you do it. A verb is something you can do. So I can be fruitful. I, I am doing it. I am multiplying. I'm doing something. I'm replenishing. I'm doing something. I'm subduing. I'm doing something. I'm dominating. I'm doing something. And it's always performance. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. God said it's not a verb. It's a noun. And what does that mean? A noun is a person, a place, or thing. It means that you, that's who you are. You're not doing, you're being. So you be fruitful because that's who you are. My name, my parents name me Marlene, but I'm fruitful. I am multiply, I am replenish. I am subdue and I'm dominate and because that's who I am I don't have a choice but to be fruitful and to multiply and replenish and subdue and dominate because that's who I am it's my nature like it is God's nature to love I can't help myself because that's who I am it's in my DNA be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of mind is taking place today. In the name of Jesus, God is shifting mindsets. That's who you are. So how do we execute God's mandate? How do we execute it? Two points. Number one, renewal of your mind. And I just alluded to that. So positionally, we're there experientially we have to walk it out because if we look at our lives and we look at the word of God and the promises that God promised us he said this is what you should be and this is what you should be walking in and then we look at our lives and we still have a mortgage thank God we have a house but we still have a mortgage we're coming up higher this morning amen, amen. so there's a dichotomy there's this here and then there's the word here and there's our life here so he says you're not being conformed to this world I'll read it in the New King James and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so now God wants us to meditate on his word and what is meditation it is a God-given process that provides a permanent change permanent change in our thinking and it realters our souls so as we begin to meditate not just read and study but as we begin to meditate regurgitate the word of god there is a permanent change that is taking place in our psyche in our thinking and it gets to the point where it realters our soul and what lies in our soul is realm what resides in the soul the mind the will the intellect the emotions so things that are always fighting the spirit of God so now it alters our soul so now our mind our will our intellect our emotions now are at a place where they are submitted to the Holy Spirit because our mind is being transformed with the word of the living God secondly decrees and declaration speak the word Job 22 28 it says the righteous shall decree a thing 
I'll read it here. You will also decl declare a thing, and it shall be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. One translation says, the righteous shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. So Genesis 1, verse 1 to 4, let's read it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Where was the light? The light was inside of God. He spoke to what already existed that was inside of him and commanded it to come out. What is inside of you? What are you commanding that's inside of you to come out? What solution, what keys, what answers, what inventions are you commanding to come out? So that the world can benefit from it. So that mankind can be at ease with what's inside of you. So that men and women can be drawn even more so to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he spoke to light and he said, light let there be. And he saw what he said. Ooh. So we're at a place right now where not just only declaring the word, but we're expecting and because we're expecting, there has to be manifestation. For God said that the expectation of the righteous, it will not be cut off. So we expect it. Come back with your testimonies. Revelations 12, 11, I believe it says, and be overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Testimonies, take this word leave this place today and inquire of God he gives you wisdom he gives you ideas he may give you a dream he may give you an invention apply it and come back with testimonies for the glory of God so Mark 11 so you said I was in Genesis God created us in his image and likeness correct we have his DNA so look at Mark 11 23 it says, verily, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, see I'm a whosoever, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he said. Does that look familiar? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 does that look familiar same principle applies amen even if I don't see it I believe it you never stop who are you great mountain that you should not bow low Jesus has defeated the darkness and he has never lost a battle and he never will he never will and by extension, you never will. You never will. You never will lose a battle. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing that strengthens you, that enables you, that gives you the power. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he dwells in you. He quickens, he quickens your mortal bodies to become everything that God has designed and destined for you to become before the foundation of the earth. Rise up, possess, dominate, subdue, replenish. Multiply. That's who you are. That's who you are. Do you believe God? That's who you are. Hallelujah. Who or what is inside of you? Who? We'll start with who. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
is inside of you. Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing, he lives inside of you. The anointed one and his anointing, he lives inside of you. What does that mean in layman terms? It means that you are loaded with Christ, the most powerful force in the universe. I believe you're quiet because you're just ingesting this word. But that is explosive. You are loaded with Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, the most powerful force in the universe. You cannot be stopped. You cannot go under. You cannot lose. You have victory all the time. You say, well, Marlene, I don't know about that. Look at Joseph. He had to go through a process, right? It says the word of the Lord tried him until it came to pass. Don't mistake your process with what is. The process is a necessary part of the journey. It is not your outcome. It is not your destination. The word of the Lord tried him until it come to pass. It was a process. He didn't know when God gave him that word that he would be hated and despised by his own siblings sold into slavery, wrongfully accused of rape, be thrown into prison. But then the word of the Lord came to pass. And he became the president, second in command. And God used him to save not just his generation, but generations to come. Don't be moved by the process. That's all it is. It's the process. Your end is beautiful. It is lovely. It is glorious. It is filled with wonders. It is spectacular. We would look at your life and say, yes, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. We look not at what we see presently because it is temporal and it will change but the word of God is eternal it change it not it change it not it is permanent permanent so what is the anointing Isaiah 10 27 Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. It is something that comes on our human flesh to do what God has assigned us to do because what God has assigned for our life is not within the confines of human ability. It is not by our might, it is not by our power, but it's by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit of the Almighty God. The same Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ. The anointing is designed to give you sweatless victory. They're not going to be a struggle. It's going to be smooth. Smooth. One transition from glory to glory. 
from glory to glory. Abraham, he didn't have to battle with the ram causing the caught in the ticket because God made it good for him. He allowed, God allowed the ram to be caught in the ticket. So Abraham did not have to struggle to, to get this ram, to put it on the altar, to sacrifice it. God did it. It's going to be sweatless. That's what the anointing is going to do for you. So coming to the last question, what is God's assigned purpose for you here on the earth? I want you over the next week, it's not something that we're just going to answer today, but over the next week, this is going to be homework. <laughs> over the next seven days, I want you to really in intentionally inquire of the Lord, God, what is my purpose? What is my assigned purpose here on earth? So some of you may know already, but may I announce to you that might just be one part of God's purpose for your life. Yeah, he's multifaceted. Again, DNA, you were created in his image and his likeness. For some, it might just be one area. For others, it might be several, and I'll touch on some of them. So what is God's assigned purpose for you here on earth? Number one, to know him and to make him known. To know him and to make him known. I've encountered the Lord. I remember when I first got saved, I went home, and for the whole night, I couldn't sleep. I just laid on the bed and I got filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time and I was just praying in tongues, speaking in tongues and I felt like I had an out of body experience. It was like another world. I was just giggly. I was just like, hallelujah, this is beautiful. <laughs> just the joy, you know, your first love. Just the joy of just being with him and loving him and not just loving him but experiencing his embrace and his love. Ah, oh, none like any other. So that's our purpose, to know him, the king of glory, the love of our souls. Ah, the one who kisses gently. The one who cocoons us in the warmth of his embrace. Ah, our strong tower hiding place. To know him <laughs> and to make him known. Next, to dominate in the mountain that we have been assigned. And there are seven mountains we call it the pillars of society, religion, family, education, sorry I'm going fast, <laughs> government, arts and entertainment, media, and the economy. So where are you assigned? Now you can be assigned in different places. You can be assigned in different places. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. That word power there, it means creative ideas and ability creative ideas witty inventions creative solutions answers he said i'm going to give that to you why so that my kingdom can be established the covenant that i swore to your forefathers can be established there was a lady by the name of madam cj walker an african-american woman in the u.s she was born a free slave. Her parents were slave. They got free, and she was a fifth child. And when she was born, her parents were already freed, so she was born a free slave. And at an early age, at the age of seven, her parents died, one year apart from the other. Her mom died this year, the next year her father passed away. And at the age of seven, she became an orphan. And so she was sent to live with her sister and the sister's husband at the age of seven and she was treated poorly by her sister's husband and so to get away from all of that she got married at the age of 14 and two years later she had a daughter when she was 20 years old her husband passed away 
And when her husband passed away, she worked, she did laundry, and she was paid $1.50 a day. And she did that for 18 years. When she was 38 years old, she had a scalp problem and all her hair was falling off. And it was something that was common with a lot of the black women in her times. And she tried all different things and nothing worked. And so one night she was sleeping and she had a dream. And in that dream, she, she saw the mixture, exactly the product that she should be using. So she got up, she went out and she got it and she mixed it and she started using it on her hair and it worked. And so she tried it with her friends and her family members and it worked on their hair as well. And so eventually she decided this is something that could be quite lucrative. She started a business and that business turned into a multi-million dollar business. She was noted as the first African American woman to become a multi-millionaire. She had a dream. What is inside of you? God said, I'm going to give you the power, the creative ideas and the ability to acquire wealth. Age is not a factor here. You can be 17, you can be 70, you can be 80, you can be 15, you can be 10. Age is not a factor here. God is speaking. Say, God, I open my spirit whew, to receive from you. Speak to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. So God is about to remove you. I'm here to announce this morning. He's about to remove you from your comfort zones. Say amen. amen. Say move me, Lord. I want to be moved. I want to be a world changer for you. Move me, God, from my comfort zones. What are comfort zones? Psychological state in which things feel familiar to a person and they're at ease and they perceive they are in control of their environment. You're comfortable where you are. I don't want to move. I'm okay here, Lord. I'm okay. No, God said, I'm going to uproot you from your comfort zones. There's a purpose behind it. Dependencies. He's going to uproot you from dependencies. Your jobs. I'm not saying that you're going to get fired. No, that's not what I'm saying. Your job is a seed. It's not your source. It's a seed God uses, gives you to use. He said, I give seed to sow and bread to eat. Your job is a seed. But some of us have become dependent on our jobs. And it has become our first love, but us not even realizing it has become. God has said, I'm going to shift you from that. It's a thinking. And we think with that job, we have good retirement packages. We have good benefits. In the kingdom, the benefits are so much better. So much better. The systems of this world... So we have a credit system here in Canada, and we go by that. You have to have good credit to get a house. You have to have good credit to get a car. What does God's word say? What is his system? What is his way of doing? What is his way of being? His system says when you give, it will be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He will cause men to pour into your bosom. His system says, when you tide, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I will open up the windows of heaven. And I will pour you out blessings that there will not be even room for you to receive it. Say, God, I make room today. As I tide, I make room today in the name of Jesus. You shall not want for anything. He is going to make your name great. Genesis. 
Genesis 12. Verse 1 and 2, it says, Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abraham, Go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And this is what God says to, you, to us. He says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguish and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others every year i say god one year put me in a position where for the conference i can just give finance a check to cover the entire course of the conference this sister is in need I can just give her the key for a new house. That's inside. But there's a lot to do outside as well. Dispensing good to others. So we're not acquiring it to consume it on ourselves. We will be beneficiaries, but the purpose is to dispense on others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is the covenant that God had with Abraham. We are beneficiaries of Abraham. So that covenant applies to us today. So we walk in it in all fullness. And as I finish, I want to go back to the beginning. You are loaded. You are loaded with the greatest force in the universe, Christ himself, the anointed one, and his anointing. So as the elders and pastors prepare for the Lord's table, I want us to decree some things today. Just raise your right hand and let's decree together. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That your word that has gone forth will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you sent it forth to in the hearts and in the lives of your people. That many under the sound of my voice will come back with resounding testimonies to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. That we would say, Lord, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. It has not into our hearts what you have revealed to us, but you have revealed it unto us by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So declare, I am fruitful. I am multiply. I am replenish. I am subdue. I am dominate. I am transform by re the renewing of my mind with the word of God I possess access to the mind of Christ I possess witty inventions and ideas I possess creative solutions and answers to the world's problem I possess keys in Jesus name I speak now to every gift, every calling that's inside of me, and I command it to come forth in the name of Jesus. Manifest in Jesus' name. Lord, now I expect it, and I know my expectation shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank God for his word.
hallelujah, we come to this sacred moment. Is there anyone who was not served? Can you indicate by the raising of your hands so we can serve you, please? Thank you, everyone was served. Hallelujah. Let us raise this sacred bread in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The scripture said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. We thank the Lord for this sacred moment. We come to his banquet table to nourish ourselves with not just physical food, but with spiritual food. We thank him for his broken body, tattered and torn, for the remission of our sins. Hallelujah. Make animate our mind with all its thoughts. Hallelujah. With our will, with all its stubbornness. My God, with our, our desires, hallelujah, that we have, which is not according to his will. Make animate us to walk in righteousness and in his glory. We thank him for this broken body today. We are eating, believing, hallelujah, that his flesh is meat indeed, hallelujah. And if we don't eat his flesh, hallelujah, and drink his blood, hallelujah, hallelujah, we cannot, hallelujah, be close to him. This is his body. Let us raise it again, believing. This is his body. Let us raise it again, believing. With an expectation. With expectation. With expectation. That it will become a conduit of our peace. Let us eat together. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. We bless you today, Father, and we thank you. We remember, Father Calvary. We thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We thank you as because of that blood we have access to your throne and we can have a relationship with you. We can call you Abba Father. We can call you Daddy. We can come boldly before you to make our request known. We can come and sup with you. We can come and lay at your feet and worship and honor you and adore you because of the blood of Jesus. We thank you that no longer high priests have to come on our behalf. The veil has been rent and we can come boldly, boldly before you. So we thank you for the blood this morning. As we partake, Father, of this blood, may those of us, Father, who may have gotten reports from the doctor, may we come back with testimonies next week, next week, next week, next week, next week. May we come back with testimonies to your honor and to your glory. So we partake and we say thank you for healing for it is our bread, it is our portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. thank God today for his instructional word. 
his revealing word, his proceeding word. My declare over your life is that this blood will seal that word in the inner recesses of your spirits. That every voice that tries to come and steal this word, we plead the blood of Jesus. We cut it off from your hearing. We annihilated by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. And we declare that you are his good shepherd. And his voice and his voice alone you would hear. And the voice of a stranger you will not follow in the name of Jesus. So this word, we seal it with the blood in the core of your spirits, in the inner recesses of your heart and your mind. We seal it now with the blood and we declare our benediction today and we declare that we believe and we agree that God has called us and he has empowered us he has assigned us to influence and to affluence in every pillar of society to change and to affect lives. Now I believe and I agree that God has called me and he has empowered me and I will change and I will affect every life in Jesus name amen be blessed in Jesus name if you had not had an opportunity to give your gift we invite you now to come to the altar and sow your seed